Hey guys and welcome to a new video and today we will be starting Get Good and this is the first ever episode that is going to be recorded for it and we will be starting out with the basics of TF2 with five small tips to help you get started and then um, some of those tips will also be things you might not know or I've been getting a lot of questions about. Now before I actually start I do want to say I did get braces which is why I can't actually talk that well right now but I am trying for you guys because I still want to make videos and stuff like that so if I say some things that are quite weird and sound funny it's not my fault I'm not used to talking with these on yet so I'm sorry about that and let's get right into the video. So one thing I see a lot of new players struggling with is their view model FOV and their general FOV. The model FOV is how far away the gun is from your face. I like to play it at around 80 to 90 generally, but some people prefer it closer to them or even further away. To change your view model FOV, enable the developer's console in the advanced settings and press the tilde key to open it and then type in vmodel underscore FOV, then the number you want it to be. General FOV is how much of kind of the map you can see around you. Uh, for example, new players generally have a lower FOV because they haven't changed it or they don't know how to change it. And 90 is probably the best FOV to play on for games like TF2, where you want to see as much as you can without everything being really weird. I think you can do this by typing in FOV underscore desired, but I don't know actually what that does. It will be on the screen now if it works or whatever. But you can change your FOV 100% by going into the advanced settings on your game settings or something like that. Yeah, I don't know, it'll be on screen right now. Um, there's a slider on there and you can change it to whatever you want. So make sure you are actually watching the video if you want to see how to do all of this stuff because it will be on there. The next tip is about getting good frame rate. Uh, TF2 is not a very optimized game sometimes and a lot of people are reporting that they're lagging a lot. Um, so basically on the advanced options, again, TF2 suggests what graphic settings to use for you to play on based on your PC components and stuff like that. And if you are lagging a little bit, you might want to turn them down because that will, you know, help you out a bit more and give you more frame rate, but will make the game look a bit worse, which isn't too much of a downside, but you know, some people prefer it to look really nice or whatever. But if you aren't having lag problems, I wouldn't recommend you changing this unless you wanted even more FPS than you already have. Then you could just make it lower. There are also configs out there that you can use to further customize your game and to hopefully give you better FPS. And you know, you could just have a quick Google search for them. There's loads of videos on YouTube about them. So yeah. So this next tip is super useful and that is showing damage numbers. This is a stupidly helpful tip because as you start playing TF2 more, you start to learn how much health a class has depending on the weapons it's holding or just, you know, seeing the class and knowing the HP. And if you can see damage numbers, it shows you how much you've dealt to that person, obviously, and you can work out quite quickly how much health they have left and if the killer's worth chasing up. For example, if you deal 150 damage to a soldier, you will know that the soldier has to have less than 50 HP, which means you might want to go and chase up the kill and actually make sure he's not on the battlefield for much longer. Whereas if you didn't have damage numbers on, you wouldn't know how much damage you've actually dealt to the soldier or if it's worth chasing up the kill or not. And he could very easily get away because you don't know to chase up that kill and that he is on low HP. You can turn on damage numbers by typing into your console hood underscore combat text one. And after you've done that, type in hood underscore combat text underscore batching one. This will add up all of the damage you have done to an enemy in that one second, which will make it much clearer to see how much damage you've actually done to the person because it just adds them all up together and you won't have to read off different numbers and add them all in your head. So yeah, that makes it really, really helpful and it makes it very clear how much damage you're actually doing to people. Another hint I have here is to enable hit sounds. Sometimes the damage text doesn't show up for whatever reason, but if you hit somebody, you will definitely hear a sound telling you that you have landed a shot. You can turn this on by typing in tf underscore ding -a -ling -a -ling one This allows you to easily tell when you've hit an enemy if the damage numbers don't show up because, you know, you'll hear the sound. And there are custom hit sounds you can download, but Google a different tutorial for that because I won't be covering it in this video. 
And the final tip is something you guys have been asking me for for ages. And this is how to see your character in the bottom corner of your hood. And that includes all your hats and stuff and all your weapons that you're using and stuff like that. And it just looks a lot nicer. And it doesn't actually help you anyway. It's just purely cosmetic. But I guess if you do have view models off, you'll be able to see what weapon you're holding and it could help you in that way. But it is a bit small, so I'm not too sure. You can enable this by typing in CL underscore hood underscore player class underscore use underscore player model one to enable it. And that's how you enable it, whatever. My English is good anyway. And yeah, you should be able to see your cosmetics in the bottom corner where your class image normally is and it will just look a lot nicer. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned some new stuff or managed to figure out something you didn't already know. And I want to try and make a get good video each week for you guys because I really want to start making this series instead of announcing it and then not doing anything with it for a long, long time. And I have a few other cool video ideas coming out soon and I've just got to get a schedule together for when that will actually be coming out and I need to sort out a lot of stuff going on in my life. But I need to do it all before the 30th because then I won't be able to make videos for a while. But anyway... Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, comment what you thought and what I could do better next time. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.